an unimaginable 3.5 billion years ago, an extraordinary event takes place on Earth. A living cell is formed from chemical compounds. The cell divides and multiplies. This event marks the beginning of life. Biological evolution progresses and yields cyanobacteria about a billion years later. These single-celled organisms make their own food from water, gas and sunlight, sugar. Photosynthesis is invented. In the process, they also produce oxygen, which slowly accumulates in the Earth's atmosphere. To this day, the microorganisms in the water produce most of the vital oxygen on our planet. In the enormous time span of three billion years, the simplest living beings consisting of only a few cells are the only inhabitants of the Earth. About 500 million years ago, multicellular organisms develop, plants and animals populate the Earth, and an enormous number of species emerges in a relatively short time. Biodiversity is the basis for stable ecological systems. Every environment, every plant and every animal on our planet is a habitat for millions and millions of microorganisms. These include bacteria, fungi, algae and viruses. Many of them are still completely unknown. If a habitat is destroyed or a higher species becomes extinct, thousands of as yet unknown microorganisms also become extinct. We call them microorganisms simply because they are so small. Trillions of microorganisms live in the root area of a plant alone. The entirety of this community is called a microbiome. In each microbiome, the interaction of the inhabitants with their respective tasks is crucial for the functioning of the community. Fungi, for example, supply water and minerals to plants with their thin fungal filaments. In return, they receive sugar from the plant. Bacteria, in turn, can convert atmospheric nitrogen and convey it to plants. Some plants, in particular legumes, even form nodules on their roots for this purpose, in which billions of bacteria find a home. Microorganisms on the leaf surface do not have a life as comfortable as nodule bacteria. Rapid changes due to heat, rain and wind make things difficult for them. Microorganisms are often carried by the wind from hundreds of kilometers away. The most common bacteria on leaves are methylobacteria, which are partly responsible for the taste of fruit and vegetables. A diverse microbiome is also found inside the plant. Millions of bacteria can accumulate here, but the number alone does not bring benefit. Many of the same bacteria do not improve plant life. How many different microorganisms inhabit the plant is crucial for it. Biodiversity. This principle also applies to man-made systems such as agriculture. The more diverse and species-rich a habitat is, the healthier it is. For many decades, humans have ignored this principle and disturbed the balance through monocultures and intensive farming. A cow is not just a cow. It is also the home to trillions of bacteria. Many plants are actually indigestible for the cow. Bacteria do this job. They live in a community with the cow and ferment the plant fibers, turning them into nutritious sugar. What cannot be broken down in the stomach is returned to the mouth and chewed again. The regurgitated plant pulp enters another stomach. The microorganisms there convert the pulp into digestible components. But some of the microorganisms themselves also serve as food for the cow. In addition to an average of 100 kilograms of grass, a cow digests up to 10 kilograms of microorganisms daily. The composition of the milk varies depending on which plants the cow eats and which organisms live in its microbiome. Milk becomes acidic because lactic acid bacteria convert sugar into acid. 
milk proteins form lumps in this acidic environment, and this is how cheese hardens. In addition, the acidic environment prevents the establishment of harmful bacteria, thus preserving dairy products. However, lactic acid bacteria are not only found in milk, they also live on plants and are responsible for turning cabbage into sauerkraut or vegetables into fermented vegetables. They are extremely useful bacteria and support our health. This is what a human gut looks like on the inside. Intestinal villi and even smaller microvilli enlarge the inner surface of the intestine many times over. The gut is the habitat of more than 99% of all microorganisms in humans. Up to 1,000 different species of bacteria live in our intestines. And who do we find here again? The lactic acid bacteria. Here, they also form a protective shield against dangerous organisms such as candida, a fungus that can cause unpleasant infections if it multiplies too much. Bifidobacteria also act as a protective shield. They occupy the space on the intestinal walls and thus prevent harmful microorganisms from establishing there. In the presence of Bifidobacteria, the human body also produces more of its own health guardians, the immune cells. Viruses are special forms. By definition, they are not living things because they cannot reproduce on their own they need a host to do so. Some viruses, so-called phages, only infect bacteria. The T4 virus injects its viral DNA only into E. coli bacteria. The infected bacterium then produces the T4 virus until it bursts. This process is completely harmless for humans. On the contrary, researchers in the medical field are working on programming phages in such a way that they can specifically eliminate harmful bacteria. Phage therapy can therefore be used as an alternative to antibiotics against bacterial diseases. Microorganisms are the oldest living organisms on our planet, yet most of them have not been discovered or studied. This is due to the fact that we were not able to see them for a long time. Research has only been able to penetrate this world with microscopes. However, many new and groundbreaking discoveries have only became possible through the invention of the electron microscope and the emergence of DNA research. Through microbiome research, we are beginning to understand how extensive the interdependencies between humans, animals, plants and microorganisms are. Without a microbiome, neither a blade of grass, nor a cow, or human being survives. Consequently, microbiome research affects a wide range of fields, from medicine to food systems to business and technology. It is extremely important that all stakeholders work closely together to learn more about the world of microbiomes. It is becoming increasingly obvious that microorganisms dominate our world. Exactly how they do this is still a great mystery. <laughs>